go out in the name of Christ, Lord, we will worship as your word and spirit shape our lives, Lord, we will worship, and whatever we do, word or deed, we do for the one who set us free. Give ourselves to those in need Lord, we will worship When we take instruction cheerfully Lord, we will worship When we lead with Christ's humility Lord, we will worship And whatever we do far away, Lord, we will worship when we care for children in the home, Lord, we will worship when our audience is you alone, Lord, we will worship. Good morning and a very warm welcome to Christchurch on this Sunday the 6th of September. So here we are in September and I think it's fair to say it's the weirdest September any of us have probably ever experienced. Um, September for me, I absolutely love the month, always have done. I used to love going back to school uh, with new stationery and new uniform and getting back to see my friends and that's kind of carried on into adulthood. I've even bought myself a new notebook and pen this week. Um, I just think everything about it is a fresh start, new beginnings. Um, the light at this time of year is beautiful. I just think it's a completely beautiful month. And um, it's always, to me, felt more of a new year than New Year after Christmas actually does. So apparently the Jews celebrate their new year in September. So after this period of a global pandemic um, and the lockdown that we're just slowly beginning to emerge from, and we find ourselves in September with lots of new things stretching out in front of us. Some of them are exciting, some of them are scary, um, and but they're all quite new experiences. So we think of all those that have gone back to school this week um, or who may be going back on Monday. And we've got some little ones that are starting school for the very first time. Talitha, Thomas and William, we hope that you have had or will have on Monday a fantastic time in your new school. Um, I just hope you love it and mums and dads enjoy. And then for those um, that are moving to new schools, for Blake going to secondary school and for Jemima, Jasmine and Joshua starting brand new schools, we pray that you'll settle in quickly, make new friends and just really find them um, a really lovely place to be. Um, for those going on to college or to sixth form after the chaos of um, exam results, um, we pray for you, for Megan, for Emma and for Annie all heading off to the next phase after GCSEs. And for Jade and Megan, who are preparing to leave home and go to university, we pray for you too. 
Um, some of our adults have new starts, so not least Anthony, who's come in the last month to join us here at Christchurch, and we're so excited by um, what lies ahead for us in partnership with him. But those that have started new jobs as teachers this month for Rachel and Steve um, and for all our teachers returning to work and all those children returning to um, school after such a long break. We just pray that it's everything you would want it to be and know that God goes with you. And for us at Christchurch, as we're going to hear this morning, it's a new season and um, exciting things lay ahead and it's time to reflect and to listen to what God's saying to us. And God says in the book of Isaiah, in chapter 43, verse 19, See, I am doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I am making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So as we look forward to September and the rest of the year in the future, and during the service this morning, let us listen to what is God to what God is telling us about the new season for us all. And I'm going to hand over to Laura, who will open us in prayer. Do you have a desire, a deep desire, to worship and know the Lord God and to understand the values of the kingdom? Come then and worship, for Jesus says, where two or three are gathered in his name, there he is among them. Jesus is with us. Let's pray. O oh Lord, our God, we sometimes tremble as we think of who we are and who you are. Bring us now, in this moment, to know you. See us as we are and see our yearning to be more like you. May we lay aside anything that hinders our journey with you and with our friends and neighbours. Amen. Thank you, Laura. So we've resumed the delivering of our craft packs in September to the children. So if you're a child and that comes to Christchurch regularly, you should have received an envelope through your letterbox um, over the weekend and in it will be some activities that relate to the service today some colouring and um, some other activities and a craft um, which is this hand plus the card I think. Um, if you're watching regularly and you have a child and they're not receiving a craft pack um, if you're new to Christchurch since these online services then do get in touch and let us know um, and at the end of the service I'll give you all the contact details but do let us know and we can add them to our list um, if you live locally of people that we send the packs to. So I'm going to hand over to Lel and in true Blue Peter style she's going to um, demonstrate the craft and show you one she made earlier. Redeeming love has won You rose from death and crown cut out fast can't you so we're going to have our first worship song this morning so if we're going on a journey together into this new season it's important that we are bold strong and courageous and to not forget that our the lord our god is with us 
So it should be a song that's familiar to many of you. Um, we've definitely sung it in church and I'm pretty sure that it does have actions and um, they're not on the video um, and nobody's watching you so just make them up um, if you don't know them. But I think it goes something like, I'm not going to sing, don't worry. Be bold, be strong, for the Lord your God is with you. And then there's a bit that says, um, do not be afraid, no, no, no. And that's all I can remember. So yeah, just go ahead, nobody's watching, just make it up and enjoy this worship. <laughs> So hopefully that warmed you up. Um, Anthony is going to be preaching to us um, in a bit this morning and we're going to be continuing to look at the theme of crossing over into a new season and how we can learn to walk in step with the spirit and um, become more Christ-like as we're on this journey. So with that in mind I'm going to hand over to Jackie who's going to read our first reading this morning taken from Psalm 119. Good morning everybody. Today's reading is taken from Psalm 119 verses 33 to 40. Teach me, Lord, the way of your decrees, that I may follow it to the end. Give me understanding so that I may keep your law and obey it with all my heart. Direct me in the path of your commands, for there I find delight. Turn my heart towards your statutes and not towards selfish gain. Turn my eyes away from worthless things. Preserve my life according to your word. Fulfill your promise to your servant so that you may be feared. Take away the disgrace I dread, for your laws are good. How, long, how I long for your precepts. In your righteousness, preserve my life. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Jackie. So as we continue to think about how we can become more Christ-like and how we can imitate Christ, I'm going to hand over now to a new Christchurch friend, somebody that's become familiar during these online services. I'm going to hand you over to Douglas. I happen to know that Douglas is quite popular with the children. He's also popular with a few teenagers. and There's a few adults that like him too. So he is going to talk to us this morning about imitating Christ. Hey guys, it's me again, Douglas. Yeah, um, do you want to know something that drives me crazy? Well, it, it's not really so much of a, of a what, it's more like a who. It's my little brother, Steven. He drives me crazy. He, man, he is always copying me all the time. No matter what I do, he does the exact same thing. If I'm, like, building blocks, if I'm building a tower with some blocks, I look over and he's building the exact same tower as me. Or like if I want to go play soccer with my friends and be the goalie, he tries to jump in the goal with me. And 
everybody knows you can only have one goalie per team. And, man, it drives me crazy. And and if I'm, you know, just walking along and not doing really anything, he I'll turn around and he's following me. Oh, it drives me crazy. Oh, and this, this, this is really the kicker. This is the last straw. I got to show you this. This is crazy. Look at what I found in his closet. This is, yeah. This is the exact same shirt as me. This is crazy. This is the last straw. So finally I just finally I just went over to my mom and I was like, Mom, we gotta get rid of Steven. He's driving me crazy. Can we just like, you know, sell him to a zoo or something? And we, I, I could go visit him on Tuesdays. You know, I could just, you know, walk up and knock up on the glass and say, Hi Steven. Hi, miss you. Not really. Oh well. Okay, bye. And and she was like, No, no, Douglas, we're not we're not selling your brother to the zoo. That's silly. Besides, why do you want to sell your brother? And and I said, well, he is always copying me, Mom. He's always doing the exact same thing as me. If I do one thing, he's doing the exact same thing. And I just, I've had it. I don't want to deal with it anymore. Let's just sell him to the zoo. And and she said, um, well, Douglas, he, he only copies you because he wants to be like you. And and that, that got me thinking. You see, at Sunday school, my teacher said that we should be like Jesus. And, you know, I think probably one of the best ways to be like somebody, like my mom said, is to do what they do. And and I don't think we're supposed to do everything Jesus did. You know, like like Jesus died on the cross to pay for all sins. And I don't think we're supposed to do that. Jesus was the only one who could do that. But I think what we're supposed to do is do what Jesus would do if he was in our situation. For example, let's say you are at school. And there's a new kid who looks kind of funny and he sounds funny and, and nobody really likes him. And let's say that your friends start making fun of him. Do you think Jesus would join in and make fun of this new kid? Or do you think Jesus would stand up for the new guy and maybe be his friend? Well, let's say you're walking along and you see somebody drop a dollar out of their pocket. Do you think Jesus would just go pick up the dollar and stick it in his own pocket and take it home with him? Or, or do you think that Jesus would, would catch up with that person and say, hey, you dropped your money? Or let's say that your parents tell you you can't watch a certain movie. And you go to your friend's house and your friend asks if you want to watch that movie. Do you think Jesus would, would say, yeah, my parents will never find out. Let's watch it. Or do you think he would say, no, I, I was told not to watch this movie, so let's, let's watch something else. You know, being like Jesus is not easy. Because Jesus never ever sinned. He never did anything bad in his whole life. And we do bad stuff quite a bit. And we can't be exactly like Jesus, but we can sure try. And so that's kind of what I learned, is that if I want to be like Jesus, then I should do the things that he would do. And also, I don't think I'm going to be as mad at my brother for copying me, because he just wants to be like me. But I am going to be a lot more careful, because if he wants to be like me, I want to make sure that I'm like Jesus. Well, I'll talk to you guys later. And don't forget how much Jesus loves you and that we should be like him. Bye. Thank you, Douglas. Some really wise advice there. So we're going to go to our main reading this morning, which is read to us today by Jay. And it's from Romans 13, verses 8 to 14. And then after the reading, we'll go straight over to Anthony his talk this morning. Let no de debt remain outstanding except the continuing debt to love one another. For he who loves his fellow man has fulfilled the law. The commandments do not commit adultery, do not murder, do not steal, do not covet and whatever other commandment there may be are summed up in the one rule. Love your neighbour as yourself. Love does no harm to its neighbour, therefore 
Love is a fulfilment of the law. And do this, understanding the present time. The hour has come for you to wake up from your slumber. Because our salvation is nearer now than when we first believed. The night is nearly over, the day is almost here. So let us put aside the deeds of darkness and put on the armour of light. Let us behave decently, and in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and, and debauchery, not in dissension and jealousy. Rather, clothe yourself with the Lord Jesus, and do not think about how to gratify the desires of the sinful nature. This is the word of the Lord. Amen. Yes, good morning. Good morning. So lovely to be able to bring the word of God to us this morning. I hope everybody is well and you're eager to hear what God has in store for us today. Let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for you are good and your mercies endure forever. Bless the preaching of the word this morning. Let your anointing distill wisdom and revelation as we hear you speak to us by your spirit. Every heart that is open to receive, bless, quicken. And for every heart that is in a place of struggle, let grace come and wrap its arms around them, those hearts and let them open up to hear your word of life this morning in Jesus name. So we've been on a journey. We've been exploring what it means to be in a new season as a church. But individually, it may be a new season for you as well. So if you've got your Bibles, your pens, your writing material, let's go. Now, today's reading, uh, our second reading from Romans is exciting. Because Paul, the writer of this epistle, is encouraging us to walk in love. Now, if you've been following us for the past three Sundays, you'll realize that God has been taking us, Christchurch, on a journey. First and foremost, he's, telling, he's told us that we are in a new season. There's no doubt about it. Remember, he said, Moses is dead. Joshua, arise, go into the land. So we've taken that as our standpoint, that the old season is gone, it was exciting, good things happened, but that chapter is closed and we're going forward. And then we've seen how to cross over, how to actually begin to take steps in the direction of this new season. And we saw that Jesus is the strategy for our crossing over, keeping our eyes on him because he is the author and the finisher of our faith. He's the originator and the one who concludes everything. So we need to keep our eyes on him. He's our prize. He's our finish line. So we need to keep our eyes on him as we cross. Remember, the children of Israel and Joshua had to keep their eyes on the ark. So we keep our eyes on Jesus. And now we've crossed over, as it were. We sanctified ourselves, remember from last time, dedicated ourselves to crossing over with our eyes on Jesus. Now we are, so to speak, making progress we shouldn't lose focus it's so easy easy to achieve something in god and take your eyes off him for a little while bit and say oh we've done that bit yay and we get so excited we start to lose focus and if care is not taken we start to observe things around us and that starts to impact our faith. It starts to impact our trust. It starts to distort our focus. 
So we're encouraged by the Apostle Paul this morning. He said, Oh, no one anything except to love one another. You see, because love is the best way to live. If you remember when the children of Israel got to the Mount Sinai in the wilderness, the, the Lord gave Moses the Ten Commandments, a code for living. Now, because they did not have the nature and the ability to keep the law, they broke the law so many times. They broke the Ten Commandments so many times. But now for us, we don't have a moral code on tablets of stone. By reason of our faith in Jesus, all the commandments of God have been inscribed in us. So naturally, we just do them. And that's what Paul is saying here. He said, look, all the commandments of don't kill, don't steal, don't commit adultery and all the other commands. Love the Lord your God with all your heart. All those things are summed up in two commandments. Remember, Jesus said, look, all these ten commandments can be just collapsed into two. One, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your strength, with all your mind. And two, love your neighbor as yourself. He said, if you do these two things, it says you have fulfilled the law. So if we walk in love, we are carrying out the moral code. We are fulfilling the law. We are pleasing God. We don't have to stumble over, oh, which law have I not uh, observed today? Or which law do I need to put in my consciousness today. No, 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 no. Naturally, because we are lo love beings, in Romans chapter 5, uh, it says, verse 5, it says, the love of God is already within us by the Holy Spirit. It's been shared abroad in our hearts. So when we learn to just flow from within, we walk in love. We release love and we can truly experience life. Love is the best way to live. In one of the epistles, of, in fact, in the first epistle of the Apostle John. Now, the letter that John wrote is different from the gospel that John wrote. So, so the, the epistle is 1 John, you know, uh, and, and, and John was like, he said, this is how we truly know those who believe. This is how we truly know those who have life, have this eternal life. It says they've passed from the realm of death. They've passed to the realm of life. <clears throat> I beg your pardon. They've passed from the realm of death to the realm of life. Why? Because they love the brethren. Because they love one another. So the, 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 the deciding factor, the litmus test for us is when we truly walk in, in love, we are walking in life. When we truly walk in love, we are truly alive. We are walking in life. So love is the best way to live. Love is the fulfillment of the moral code. It's just like learning how to drive. For the first few lessons, you have your instructor telling you what to do and what not to do. So it seems like you're stumbling over this moral code. However, over time, it gets to a place where you're confident enough and all that you've been hearing about driving safely has, has become part and parcel of your being it's now something you do unconsciously you step into your car 
strap yourself up, sit belt, adjust your mirrors, you know, and you do, do all the necessary things you need to do without thinking about it. It has become your life. That's how love is. Initially, as a new Christian, as you read the word of God, it may seem like do that, do this, do that, do this. But with the help of the Holy Spirit, after a while, it becomes an unconscious reality in you. And you just love people. You just love God. It just flows out of you. You just do it unconsciously. And as we are in a new season in Christ Church, love is already within us. As we keep our eyes on Jesus, who is the embodiment of love himself, we can truly live. We can truly make progress. We can truly love one another. Jesus said, by this, those around you will know that you are my disciples. Not because you have a hundred, hundred, hundred Bible verses memorized. That is good. It's good to memorize the Bible. Not because you attend church regularly, you know, uh, you get there promptly. That is lovely. It's good to do that. But because you love one another. The way people outside, the way people in the community will know that we are tr truly of Christ, will know that we truly are of Jesus, it is when we truly love one another. That is the expression of life. When people start to see that in us, among us, you will see that people will say, you know what, we want what you've got. You people love one another selflessly. God is fully expressed in you. Remember, there's a phrase in the Bible that says, God is love. Not God has love. God is love. Where true love is fully and truly expressed, there God is. So the way to demonstrate Jesus is to love. The way to truly live, that eternal life, is love. In John 17 and, 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 and verse 3, Jesus says, And this is eternal life, that you may know. In other words, that you may love. That you may know the only true God and Jesus Christ whom he has sent. That is what eternal life is. Eternal life is not just a thing we receive. It's a person we are in union with. It's a person we are connected to. Is like taking a branch and grafting it into a tree. By reason of that union, that tree, that branch becomes alive. It starts to bear fruit of that connection. <clears throat> Excuse me. So by reason of our connection with Jesus, you remember it says, I am the vine, you are the branches. By reason of our connection, we start to bear fruit. We start to truly live we can love people sincerely and genuinely authentically we can express life to the full john 10 10 jesus said i have come that you may have life and life to the full i have come that you may love and love to the full but Paul didn't stop there. Paul said for us to be able to fully walk in love, we need to do three things. Because he said in that same uh, reading we, we heard this morning, he said, 
and do this. It says, love does no harm to, to his neighbor. Love is the fulfillment of the law. And do this. Why? He said, because the times in which we live are critical times. And we know this year, we know what we have experienced. So these times are critical times. Number one, we need to understand, he said, we've been in a time of the night. The whole world has been in the time of the night. What happens at night? Sleep. Except if you're working at night. Most people are fast asleep. So Paul is using the metaphor of night and day to help us understand the times in which we live. He said, I wake out of sleep. Wake up. Don't sleep like others are sleeping. Why? Because our salvation is closer than we think. Now you may say, what's going on here? Now, when Jesus died for us, he, he paid the price. He exchanged his life for the life of the world. In order that whoever would receive him would receive the same life he offered and become saved and be transferred from death to life. Now, in the expression of that salvation, there come a time when Jesus will return. I hope you know that. And, and with his return, he's going to make us completely alive, like Im, what is called immortality. That will be the subject of another sermon. Where death has no power over anybody anymore. Death will be finally destroyed in the lives of those who believe in Jesus. That is what Paul means by that salvation that is closer than we think. It's going to happen within the twinkle of an eye. We will be clothed with evil. Immortal, uh, sorry, even, I'm so excited. Mortality will be swallowed up with immortality. Our lives will be completely transformed. And an example of, of what that would look like is when Jesus rose from the dead. Even though he still had a body, his body had become spirit. Because Jesus could go through walls. He could appear and disappear. Yet he was human. Fully God, fully man. Yet he had a body. Yet the holes were still there. In his hands and in his feet. But his body had been transformed into spirit. It had become immortal. Yet he could eat fish. With the disciples. And still ascend into heaven and come back. That's what's going to happen to every believer, every, every child of God. Isn't that exciting? Because that was God's plan all along from the beginning, before sin, sin came into the picture. We were meant to be glorious beings, created in the image and the likeness of God. Anyway, Paul says, it's time. Wake up, wake up, wake up. That salvation is coming. That fullness that we have been on a journey to fully possess is close. Closer than we think. So he said, cast off the works of darkness. In other words, stop acting like you never knew Jesus. Stop fighting each other. Stop envying each other. You are now a love being. Stop getting drunk. Stop watching horrible stuff. 
not as a law, but they drain life. They drain your life. Stop feasting on these things. Because you're different. You're not a child of the night. You're a child of the day. Jesus says, you are the light of the world. So cast out the works of darkness, put on the armor of light. And then he says, clothe yourselves with Jesus. Clothe yourselves with love. In that way, you will give no room for all the works of darkness to show up in your life. I'm aware of time. And I know it's exciting to hear all these things. So we'll continue next Sunday. It's been a pleasure sharing the word of God with you. God bless. Thank you so much, Anthony, for a fantastic talk. Lots to think about for us and to pray into as well as we move forward. So we're going to have a time of worship now. Um, the two songs that we're going to play were both recorded by members of our worship team and they're reflective songs. So worship however you feel fit this morning. Either sit and let the words and the song flow over you and reflect on what God might have been saying to you during the talk. Um, or stand and sing and sing your praises to God. The words will be on the screen, so if that's what you want to do, you'll be able to do that too. Um, so the first song is All Who Are Thirsty, and the second is Consuming Fire.
Lucard before we come to prayer. Our prayers may be a bit awkward, our attempts may be feeble, but since the power of prayer is in the one who hears it and not in the one who says it, we thank you Father that our prayers do make a difference. So let's come together this morning and make a difference. I'm leading our prayers this morning from the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven. Father, we thank you for the privilege of calling you that. Father, Dad, a really close word. Obviously Jesus could call you that, but we can too, which makes Jesus our older brother. As we continue to practice calling you Father, make us more like our older brother, more like Jesus. Maybe practice will make perfect. Our Father in heaven. Hallowed be your name. May your name be holy and recognised as holy all over the place. Our society regards many strange things as holy or worthy of worship. Money, sex and power, for example. We pray that the mystery of your holy presence may slip through all our defences and catch us unprepared. Yes, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come on earth as in heaven. This must be the most exciting prayer in the world. We pray for a time when your reign of justice, peace and love will make this world sparkle with your life. Help us to spot the kingdom coming and to join in with everything we've got. Yes, your kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Father, in your kingdom, everyone will have what they need, their particular bread. In anticipation of that time, we dare to ask you for what we need, what we really need, not what we'd rather like to have. But even as we pray that prayer, we have to bring with us the hungry of the world whose need is simply bread, basic food, clean water and a chance in life. We pray for our hungry neighbour. Give us all this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Father, we know that much sin is love, which has been misdirected into wrong things. You long to redirect our love to each other and to you. Help us to be open to your rich and reckless forgiveness. 
but make us aware too of those people who we aren't forgiving and against whom we still hold grudges. Bring them to our mind now and help us to release them from our grasp. Father, forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. It's not so much the minor infringements you're bothered about, Lord. It's the habits of the heart. You deeply desire that we shouldn't be taken into the clutches of much greater darkness that opposes your reign of love at every turn. Rescue those who are playing with darkness. Keep a guard on their heart, a watch on their door, especially anyone we feel is particularly under pressure right now. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Thank goodness the outcome of our struggles isn't in doubt. Following Christ may be hard, but it's not as hard as following nobody or trying to follow ourselves. Where Christians are struggling today, in countries where religious repression is normal, or even in the country, this country, where many congregations are small and confidence is low, raise the eyes of your people to the coming dawn, for nothing can hold back your reign, for the kingdom, the power, the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen, Lord, Amen. Amen, Lord, Amen. Thank you, Rob and Leslie, for those lovely prayers this morning. So we're drawing to the end of our service this morning and um, we're just going to go through our notices before we close. So as we've said at the beginning, we're in September. It's a new season and um, the country is slowly emerging from lockdown and beginning to return to some new kind of normal. And the church and Christ Church are no exception to that. We are looking at reopening. We have exciting news. The plan will be to begin to reopen for services on a Sunday morning from the 4th of October. Now, obviously, there are government guidelines that we do need to um, stick to and adhere to. Um, rules on social distancing, wearing face masks and the like. And so services won't immediately return to how they were before, but we will be back in the building. And the plan is to have some people in the building, but to continue to live stream the services from the building via YouTube so that um, some people can watch from home. So it's very much in the planning pro stage at the moment um, and you can look forward to hearing much more news on that um, over the next few weeks um, so that by the time, time we get to the 4th of October you will know what's happening and how you can access services in different ways. Um, so please be patient, please pray for us as a team as we um, look at sorting that out. And do keep your eye both on the announcements each week during the service, but also on our Facebook group. If you're on Facebook and not in the group, let me know and I'll add you um, via email and on our main Facebook page and on our website. Um, we will make sure that you know what's happening. Um, and the contact details, I've just updated these if you need to let us know anything. So I said earlier, if you've got children and you're not receiving crafts packs, then do give me a ring. Um, or send me an email um, or bell. Um, any questions you've got, I've the slide's been updated, I've just added Anthony's email as well and he is vicar at christchurchstamford.com so pretty easy to remember. So birthdays this week, so um, I've actually added two that were last week that we um, didn't mention, um, apologies for that. So Amy and Jade, we hope you had a very happy birthday. And for birthdays coming up this week, it's actually my birthday on Tuesday, so I'll wish myself a happy birthday. I'm not aware of any others, but if it is your birthday this week, then have a fantastic time, enjoy, and we celebrate um, kind of with you, even if we're not able to see you. So happy birthday. So Tots at Home, Lel is continuing at the moment to do Tots at Home. She's been singing songs throughout the summer on... Um, Facebook um, please go over there to the Facebook page not the group and you will see the content from Lel on a Thursday morning um, and again as we begin to look at reopening um, we will begin to look at how we can 
meet with you as tots but at the moment it's staying online so look out for that each Thursday morning um, same with the den that will remain online for the time being Lel runs a zoom online session with the young people that attend the den on a Thursday evening from 6 till 6 30 um, if you have a young person that's um, year 6 to year 10 is that right yes that's right sorry I'm just looking at my computer um, if you have a young person that hasn't joined that yet but would like to, then you need to email Lel. Her email's on the slide, lel at christchurchstamford.com. Let her know and that can be sorted out for you. Um, so Zoom prayers have resumed yesterday and will continue online for the time being. Um, and I send the links out to those by email or Facebook. If you're not currently getting them again, let me know. Um, but do join us at 10 on a Saturday morning um, to pray for the needs of our church, each other, the world. Um, if you're anxious about coming and praying out loud, you don't have to pray out loud. You can simply just turn up and you'll be on the call and you can listen to everybody else and um, pray in your head. God still hears it. Um, please don't be anxious. Just give it a whirl. It'd be lovely to see some more people out there um, joining us for those prayer meetings. Um, we'd love you to get involved um, with our services, even as we go back into the building. There will still be, obviously, a need for people reading and musicians and lots of creative um, talents, using your talents. And we hope that we've learned things during lockdown that we can bring a new flavour to our services as we go forward. So um, keep in touch, keep talking and um, let us know if there's something that you would like to do or if you have any ideas. Um, and you can do that by contacting us on the emails. So if the service has um, blessed you this morning or if it's spoken to you in a particular way, we'd love to hear from you and hear your thoughts, what you think God's been saying to you. Um, and I will be heading over to the Facebook room in a moment. Now to get on that, you need to go to the Facebook group, not the page. Click on rooms, which is kind of along the bar on, when you go into the group. Click on rooms and then it'll say join. If you've joined before, we've learnt this last week, if you've joined before, you'll get a notification. But if you've never been into rooms, you won't get a notification. You have to click on the bit that says rooms and then you'll see it's happening. And then you click join and that will bring you into there. And we can have a chat after the service and see um, how your week's been and just catch up over coffee as we would have done if we were in person. And so that's it for today, I think. So I am going to hand over to Nigel, who will close in prayer. And then we'll have two final songs, um, Build Your Kingdom Here by Rend Collective and Spirit Lead Me. Um, please do stay and listen to the songs and then head over to Facebook Rooms if you're able to. Um, and if you're not able to head there, then you could pick up the phone to somebody, give them a call and um, just stay in touch with each other. And um, we hope and we pray that we will see you all in person very soon. Over to Nigel. Let us pray. Help us to see those we meet beyond these doors in the way that you see them. Help us to offer support from what we know of you. Send us out from here to be a shining light for you, a guiding light for those in confusion, aloneness and darkness. Amen. Rule and reign in our hearts again Increase in us we pray Unveil why we're made Come set our hearts ablaze with hope Like wildfire in our very souls Holy Spirit, come invade us now We are your church We need your power in us We seek your kingdom first Hunger and we thirst Refuse to waste our lives For you're our joy and prize To see the captive hearts released The hurt, the sick, the poor at peace We lay down our lives for heaven's courts We are your church This earth Build 
inside. 